The territory of New Guinea was an Australian administered territory on the island of New Guinea from 1920 until 1975. In 1949, the territory and the territory of Papua were established in an administrative union by the name of the Territory of Papua and New Guinea. That administrative union was renamed as Papua New Guinea in 1971. Notwithstanding that it was part of an administrative union, the Territory of New Guinea at all times retained a distinct legal status and identity until the advent of the independent state of Papua New Guinea. The initial Australian mandate was based on the previous German New Guinea, which had been captured and occupied by Australian forces during World War I. Most of the territory of New Guinea was occupied by Japan during World War II, between 1942 and 1945. During this time, Rabaul, on the island of New Britain, became a major Japanese base see New Guinea campaign. After World War II, the territories of Papua and New Guinea were combined in an administrative union under the Papua New Guinea Provisional Administration Act 1945-46. Background Archaeological evidence suggests that humans arrived on the island of New Guinea at least 60,000 years ago. These Melanesian people developed stone tools and agriculture. Portuguese and Spanish navigators sailing in the South Pacific entered New Guinea waters in the early part of the 16th century and in 1526–27, Don Jorge de Meneses came upon the principal island, Papua. In 1545, the Spaniard Inigo Ortiz de Ritz gave the island the name, New Guinea, because of what he saw as a resemblance between the island's inhabitants and those found on the African Guinea coast. Knowledge of the interior of the island remained scant for several centuries after these initial European encounters. In 1884, Germany formally took possession of the northeast quarter of New Guinea and it became known as German New Guinea. In 1884, the British government proclaimed a protectorate over the southeastern quarter of New Guinea. The protectorate, called British New Guinea, was annexed by Britain outright on 4 September 1888. The territory was transferred to the newly federated Commonwealth of Australia on 18 March 1902, and British New Guinea became the Australian Territory of Papua, with Australian administration beginning in 1906. <laughs> <laughs> World War I to League of Nations Mandate One of the first actions of Australia's armed forces during World War I was the seizure by the Australian Naval and Military Expeditionary Force of German New Guinea and the neighbouring islands of the Bismarck Archipelago in October 1914. Germany administered several territories in the South and Central Pacific which the British requested be captured by Australian and New Zealand forces. On the 11th of September 1914, a Royal Australian Navy force arrived off Rabaul with the Australian Naval and Military Expeditionary Force and naval troops were landed at Herbert Schohe in Kabakowl to search for German radio stations, facing some minor German resistance. Rabaul was occupied, unopposed, on 12 September. The German administration surrendered German New Guinea on 17 September. Australian troops and vessels were subsequently dispatched to occupy Germany's other territories including the New Guinea mainland, New Ireland, the Admiralty Islands, the Western Islands, Bougainville, and the German Solomons. The colony remained under Australian military control until 1921. At the 1919 Paris Peace Conference following the war, Australian Prime Minister Billy Hughes sought to secure possession of New Guinea from the defeated German Empire, telling the conference, strategically, the Northern Islands, such as New Guinea, encompass Australia like fortresses. They are as necessary to Australia as water to a city. Article 22 of the Treaty of Versailles provided for the division of Germany and the Central Powers' imperial possessions among the victorious allies of World War I in the Pacific. Japan gained Germany's islands north of the equator the Marshall Islands, the Caroline Islands, the Marianas Islands, the Palau Islands, and Kiaochu in China. German Samoa was assigned to New Zealand, German New Guinea, the Bismarck Archipelago and Nauru to Australia as League of Nations mandates, territories formerly governed by the Central Powers and which are inhabited by peoples not yet able to stand by themselves under the strenuous conditions of the modern world. Article 22 said, 
There are territories, such as Southwest Africa and certain of the South Pacific Islands, which, owing to the sparseness of their population, or their small size, or their remoteness from the centers of civilization, or their geographical contiguity to the territory of the mandatory, and other circumstances, can be best administered under the laws of the mandatory as integral portions of its territory, subject to the safeguards above mentioned in the interests of the indigenous population. The British government, on behalf of Australia, assumed a mandate from the League of Nations for governing the territory on 17 December 1920. The terms of the mandate were not received in Australia until April 1921. This mandate was enacted and administered by the Australian government through the New Guinea Act 1920 until the outbreak of the Pacific War and Japanese invasion in December 1941 brought about its suspension. World War II Shortly after the start of the Pacific War, the island of New Guinea was invaded by the Japanese. Most of West Papua, at that time known as Dutch New Guinea, was occupied, as were large parts of the territory of New Guinea but the territory of Papua was protected to a large extent by its southern location and the near impassable Owen Stanley Ranges to the north. The New Guinea campaign opened with the battles for New Britain and New Ireland in the territory of New Guinea in 1942. Rabaul, the capital of the territory was overwhelmed on 22-23 January and was established as a major Japanese base from whence they landed on mainland New Guinea and advanced towards Port Moresby in Australia. Having had their initial effort to capture Port Moresby by a seaborne invasion disrupted by the U.S. Navy in the Battle of the Coral Sea, the Japanese attempted a landward invasion from the north via the Kokoda Track. From July 1942, a few Australian reserve battalions, many of them very young and untrained, fought a stubborn rearguard action against a Japanese advance along the Kokoda Track, towards Port Moresby, over the rugged Owen Stanley Ranges. Local Papuans, called Fuzzy Wuzzy Angels by the Australians, assisted and escorted injured Australian troops down the Kokoda Track. The militia, worn out and severely depleted by casualties, were relieved in late August by regular troops from the 2nd Australian Imperial Force, returning from action in the Mediterranean theatre. The Japanese on the Kokoda Track were ordered to retreat to the coast so the Japanese could focus their efforts on the Battle of Guadalcanal, and the Australians pursued them back to the Bunagona area. The bitter Battle of Buna Gona followed in which Australian and United States forces attacked the main Japanese beachheads in New Guinea, at Buna, Sanananda and Gona. Facing tropical disease, difficult terrain and well-constructed Japanese defences, the Allies finally achieved victory after experiencing heavy casualties. The offensives in Papua and New Guinea of 1943–44 were the single largest series of connected operations ever mounted by the Australian Armed Forces. The Supreme Commander of Operations was the United States General Douglas MacArthur, with Australian General Thomas Blamey taking a direct role in planning and operations being essentially directed by staff at New Guinea Force Headquarters in Port Moresby. Bitter fighting continued in New Guinea between the largely Australian force and the Japanese 18th Army based in New Guinea until the surrender of Japan to end the war on September 2, 1945. The New Guinea Campaign was a major campaign of the Pacific War. In all, some 200,000 Japanese soldiers, sailors and airmen died during the campaign against approximately 7,000 Australian and 7,000 American service personnel. <laughs> Administrative unification with Papua After the war, civil administration of Papua and of New Guinea was restored, and under the Papua New Guinea Provisional Administration Act, 1945–46, Papua and New Guinea were combined in a new administrative union. The Papua and New Guinea Act 1949 united the territory of Papua and the territory of New Guinea as the territory of Papua and New Guinea. However, for the purposes of Australian nationality a distinction was maintained between the two territories. The Act provided for a Legislative Council which was established in 1951, a judicial organisation, a public service, and a system of local government. Under Australian Minister for External Territories Andrew Peacock, the territory adopted self-government in 1972 and on 15 September 1975, during the term of the Whitlam government in Australia, the territory became the independent nation of Papua New Guinea. References <laughs>